Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem accounts merge. We're given a list of accounts where each account is a list of strings. The first string is always going to be the name of the account and then every string following that is going to be an email. The problem is that there could be multiple accounts that belong to the same person. If that's the case, these multiple accounts will have the exact same name, but they could have a different set of emails. But we will know that these two accounts belong to the same person if they have at least a single email in common at least one or more emails in common so one of the emails that show up in this account has to also show up in this account or vice versa that means that these two accounts belong to the same person now just because two accounts have the same name doesn't necessarily mean they belong to the same person at the same time two accounts that belong to the same person will always have the same name that kind of makes it a bit tricky but we're going to need these observations to solve this problem so after we take two accounts that belong to the same person and merge them together we then want to take like a single account it's going to still be a list of strings where the first string is going to be the name of the person and then every string after that is going to be the email of the person and the emails themselves should be sorted in ascending order. That's the output that we want to return. So it's not a simple problem. Even solving the problem in the most brute force way possible isn't easy. Let me try to describe that to you and then I'll show you how we can optimize that solution a bit. And then I'll show you the final solution, which is going to be about the same time complexity as the optimal solution. So we have a list of accounts. If we have like a nested for loop where we compare every pair of accounts and then for those two accounts, let's say A1 and A2, then we try to see if there's any common emails between them. If there are, then that means these two accounts belong to the same person. And then later we might find that actually this account also belongs to this person so that means like these two accounts were connected we found that out and then we found out that these two accounts were also connected which pretty much means that all three accounts belong to the same person this is kind of the intuition that leads you to see that this is a graph problem and just the name itself accounts merge merging accounts it kind of leads you to believe that this could be a union find or disjoint set problem which it is but that is not a easy solution to come up with the easier solution is a dfs solution which i'll try to explain to you so this is kind of one of the most brute force ways to solve it where we take all the accounts put all the accounts that belong to the same person in like disjoint graphs. So maybe these two belong to the same person, A3 and A4 possibly also belong to the same person. There's like an edge connecting them and maybe A5 just belongs to a single person. Then we would want to run a DFS on each of these connected components, aggregating all of the emails for each connected component sorting those emails and also taking like the name from one of these accounts. We know that both of these accounts will have the same name since they belong to the same person. So we would take a name and then append all of these emails, which we sort. And then that will pretty much give us the output that we want it would look something like this down here. So this is a less optimal way to do it we can take this strategy and actually make it more optimal instead of taking accounts and connecting them we can actually do something even more bare bones where we actually just skip to the emails themselves we take all of the emails that belong to the same person and create disjoint sets with them so like this could be a disjoint set and then we could add others so we know that all these emails belong to the same person we would run a DFS on them and do pretty much what I described earlier. I won't go super in depth into this solution because I'm not going to code it up, but I'll say that the overall time complexity of this is going to be the same as the union find solution that I'm going to show you. 
I think this problem is a natural union fine problem, so that's what I'm going to be going with. But I'll also admit that it's not super easy to come up with. This isn't a type of problem where if you know it's union fine that you can immediately solve it. It's still not easy, so I'll explain it to you now. Suppose we have a bunch of accounts, A1, A2, A3. With union find, what we want to do is find accounts with the same owners and then merge them together. Pretty much what I showed earlier. How exactly can we do this? Well, if we iterate through every single account, we're going to get a list of its emails. We want to know if an email belongs to multiple accounts. The easiest way to do that is iterate through all the emails, take each email, map it to the account index. So let's say account index we could have also done the account name but that wouldn't work and you'll kind of see why we need the account index and then later maybe we're going through account number two we're going through all of its emails and then we find an email that we've already inserted into our hash map this is what we're going to do we're going to take each email map it to the account index that it belongs to. If we ever see an email that already exists in the hash map, that must mean it belongs to multiple accounts. So we're going to take the current index that we're at, like the current account index that we're at, let's say it's equal to two, and previously we took that same email and mapped it to maybe account index one. So now we know that account index one and account index two belong to the same person because they have an email in common. So what we're gonna do is union these two accounts together in our union find data structure. Let's just assume we have that because that's not what I really want to explain because this problem is hard enough. Hopefully you do have a decent understanding of union find. If not, there are other videos on my channel that explain it. So by the end of doing all of this, we will have our disjoint sets. Maybe A1 and A2 belong to the same person. A3 and A4 belong to the same person. We'll have that. But now with this information, what are we going to do? Well, once again, we're going to iterate through all of the emails that we have. Now we don't care so much about the account index, though we actually are going to use the account index that we mapped each email to. But we're going to take that account index and using our union find data structure, remember union find has two operations, unioning two disjoint sets together or finding the root parent or aka like the leader of that disjoint set because each disjoint set will have a leader. I'm drawing them like this, but in reality, a disjoint set is drawn like this, where maybe A1 is the leader and A2 over here is the child. So why we want to find the leader is because for every email, it belongs to a single person. We need a unique identifier for that person. And we're going to use the index of that leader account. So our find operation will give us exactly that, the index of this account. In this case, let's say it's one. And then using this index, we want to map this email to it. So we're gonna say index one has this list of emails. And we'll be able to do that for every single email. Every email will now be mapped to a single account. It won't have multiple accounts. It'll have a single account. That's why we're doing this find operation. We just want to have a single account that aggregates all of the emails that belong to it. And you can probably see by now, if we have that, if we have a mapping, so maybe account one has all of these emails, account two, belongs to the same person. So therefore it's actually not gonna have any emails. We don't even care about this anymore, but maybe account three is the leader of the other disjoint set and it has another set of emails. So possibly we started with four accounts, one, two, three, four, but now we're only left with two accounts because these are the actual accounts after we've merged all of the accounts. And we will make sure to sort the emails and have the name go at the beginning of the array, just like they want us to do in the output. 
So that's pretty much how we're going to solve this problem. If you still don't entirely understand it, this was just the intuition. Now let's actually code it up and see how it works. And then we'll talk about the time complexity as well. So I'm going to skip writing out the union find because it's mostly just boilerplate. This is like standard union find that you would write in any type of problem. If you know it, then you know it. We have our constructor where we're passing in the number of nodes that we have. In this case, we're going to pass in the number of accounts. So let me actually just do that right now. We're going to construct a union find instance passing in the length of our accounts array. And I'm just going to call this UF for short. And it supports two operations, finding the root of a given a node or value in this data structure. And we're doing path compression, which is going to make both of these operations basically run in constant time. And we also have the union operation, which is going to use our rank, which is AKA like the size of each of our disjoint sets. Initially, each of them has a size of one and initially each of their parents is going to be itself. But as we union the disjoint sets together, the parents might change. So we're going to be unioning by rank. That means the set with fewer nodes is going to be the child of the set with more nodes. And then we would update the rank accordingly. So the parent is the one that's rank is going to increase. So now let's actually get into this problem, not the union find specific stuff. So we have our union find instance. What we want to do, remember, is map every single email to the account, more specifically, each email to the index of the account that it belongs to. Now, when we iterate through each account, which I'm gonna do like this in Python, you can enumerate, which allows you to get the index and the value at the same time. So I is the index, A is the account. Then we want to go through every email in the account. But remember, the first value of the account array is going to be the name. We want to skip that. So we're going to start at index one, which is going to give us the emails. Now, there's two cases here. What if the email already exists in the hash map? That's one case. And the other case is if it doesn't. So the second one is the simpler case. If it doesn't exist in the hash map, let's just go ahead and add it. So email to account at this email is going to be mapped to this index. Now, otherwise, that means this email not only belongs to this account at index I, but it also belongs to whatever index that we inserted previously. So we can get that by just taking this. I'm going to copy and paste that. So these two indices, aka these two accounts, should be merged together. They belong to the same person. They have an email in common, so they belong to the same person. We're going to take our union find data structure and union these two together. Once all of that's done, we will have our disjoint sets. But what are we going to do with them? Well, for every single email, it should belong to a single account. So we want to create those accounts, AKA those email groups. We want to, I'm going to create a default dict. This is a hash map that will have a default value of a list because what we want to do now is take each index of the account and map it to its list of emails. Now this won't necessarily have every single account because if multiple accounts belong to the same person, we want to merge them together. So this will be that merged set. But for every single group of accounts, we have to identify a single account that's going to basically act as the leader after we merge them together. So I'm going to iterate through our previous hash map that we created, which will give us every single email and the account index that it belongs to. I'm going to change this to be a bit shorter. I'm just going to call it E. So we can iterate through that hash map like this email to account dot items because we want the key and the value, which I'm getting here. So we want the leader of this account. So we're going to say union find dot find I. I could be the leader itself or it could have a different leader. 
but basically we want a single account that's going to act as the leader. And for our email group, we want to then map this leader and then append to it this email. So for every account, we want to get all of the emails that belong to it. That's basically what we're doing here. It might make sense when you see it now, but it's definitely not easy to come up with. I do admit that. This is more of a hard problem, I think. Now, lastly, once you get this far, you can probably figure out what you need to do. We've basically taken the accounts and merged them together. Now we just need to get the output in the format that they want us to. So I'm gonna create our result. It's gonna be a list of lists. So now we're going to go through every uh, index of the account and list of emails in the hash map email group that we just created dot items is going to give us the key value pairs. And then we want the name. We already have like the list of emails, but we want the name from the account. How do we get that? Well, our original accounts array at index I and the first value at index zero is going to give us the name of that account. And then we just want to result dot append to it this name array plus the email group at index I, which is gonna give us the list of emails that belong to this account. And don't forget to actually sort them. So I'm gonna sort them here. Lastly, what this is doing, I'll briefly explain it, is if this is a list, and clearly this is a list, in Python you can basically do array concatenation. So that's kind of what I'm doing here just to make it look a bit more readable. Maybe it's less readable, but that's what this is doing here. And after we've done that, we can go ahead and return the result. So this is 45 lines of code. I hope it makes sense. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.